Chit Chat Chop. We are live on Facebook right now. I'm your host, okay. Andrew Farrell, uh, resident <laughs> chef here at uh, Kitchen Door Catering, and I'd like to welcome our guests tonight. We have Troy Ryan and Jill Sonye, Olympic silver medalist for Canadian women's hockey. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tonight, uh, I sort of gave you a little preview of what we were going to do, but tonight we're going to make blueberry grunt, so a classic Nova Scotia dessert. <clears throat> I put it, you know, because of the uh, the Olympic theme, I decided to make a few healthy healthy modifications <laughs> to the recipe. We'll see how... post Yeah, you, you can tell me how I'm doing <laughs> on the healthy it. modifications as we go along. But um, we'll, get, we'll get chatting in a second, but I just want to start off our pan to get it warming up. So, um, Troy, if you do the honor of adding the blueberries Perfect. to our skillet, I'm just going to turn up the heat here. So I've got... Turn up the heat. Turn up the heat. There we go. Induction burners. Turn up the heat. Lots of fun. They can be your best friend or worst enemy. Lots of it. Probably yeah. my worst enemy. There we go. Me. Put them right on in. There we go. So I've just got uh, four cups of, uh, these are frozen and fresh blueberries. We're coming up on blueberry season now. So I've got uh, both of here. The frozen ones are from Oxford. Uh, and in about two weeks we'll have local ones. So that's that's always exciting. Lots of antioxidents in there. Good job, Troy. You did that right. Yeah, you <laughs> nailed it. All right, so I'm going to get to the test now. Um, Ugh, let's okay. get some lemon zest in here. So you ever right. zested, you ever used a zest I've before? never zested All right, watch your before. fingers. These are really sharp. These actually, okay. This actually started off as a woodworking tool, and then chefs found an application for it in the kitchen. Nice. So just sort of, I'll do one little stroke of it here, and you can see the nice bits of lemon zest. So just get a little right. bit of right, that right in the skillet there sure. for us and get it cooking. So the idea is we're sort of uh, playing on the tart nature of the blueberry, putting that nice fragrant lemon in there, and we're going to add some of the juice of that in a sec, too. Perfect. And you're doing the right thing. You're not getting the pith in there. The white stuff's super bitter. Okay. Of course. Yeah, I meant to do that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so so when you're, when you're you know, practicing for, hot, you know, uh, getting ready for your games and everything, do you do a lot of cooking in, in preparation, or are there special meals that you like to... To, to have around to sort of bring your energy up? Or? Yeah, I think it's kind of funny. Like, everyone, it's, like, very much to each their own, yeah. I think, before a game. Like, we have, you know, we're so, so lucky. We have so many um, really good nutritionists. Is that good? That's or, perfect. Um, I'll that do that, that but often. everybody likes to have their own kind of certain things before a game and, and time, too, like, yeah. the amount of time before a game, too, yeah, so. Yeah. I'm a peanut butter sandwich girl, though, so that's you my. You were wrong with peanut butter sandwich. Yeah, that's, that's quite, my that's yeah. my pregame. Which do you have any special add-ins for a peanut butter sandwich? butter sandwich? You know, like you, do they get peanut butter and banana? Banana. Yeah. Yeah, that's my go-to. Yeah. I'll have like a big meal like a few hours before, and then like right before like pregame meal-ish, I'll, I'll do that. So. Gotcha. Well, here, let's test your uh, your lemon squeezing ability. So just give that a. Crank. As well, I'm still on the yeah. lemon. Yeah, yeah, you're still on the okay. lemon. We're not down the lemon yet. Okay. So just give it a good. This is a testament to my trainers right now. Exactly. See if I can squeeze this. Just pull out? Yep, just where pull it. Yeah, there you go. Get all that lemon juice out of there. And I'll just give it a quick stir. Good job, Troy. This is, this is a great <laughs> quick dessert for anybody. Yeah, there you go. 
<laughs> Don't worry, Troy, I'm gonna get your hands dirty making dumplings in a minute. Oh, perfect. <laughs> there you go. Is perfect. That good? That's great. Cool. That's great. So we've got our lemon all squeezed in there, nice and nice and simple. And orange juice is next up to go in here, just to sort of uh, amplify that citrus flavor and give us a little bit of uh, a little bit of sauce to work with in the pan, and also sugar. So I got that was one cup of orange juice, and I got three quarters of a cup of uh, just white sugar going in here. Oh, it Ooh. smells so lemony in here. Yeah. Oh yeah, very fragrant. That smell loaded. Thank yeah. you. That's Troy. <laughs> that is on me. <laughs> Try to pour those blueberries in pretty good. Though. Yeah, that was that was the first time he's poured something into a pan. You can tell <laughs> some skill. We have bets on who's burning this place down. So <laughs> I'm just trying to be really careful off to the side here because blueberry stains everything. We've got these nice wooden tables, and I'm new here, so I don't want to be the guy that puts blueberry all over oh, the tables. Okay. Yeah, I got I also, white pants on too, so that's well, pretty terrible. You guys are looking big. My aprons, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so you. feel free to get all the blueberry on the aprons that you want. Okay. That's that's yeah. no problem. Um, so Troy, uh, you're, you're well. Actually, you're both uh, Nova Scotian, which is awesome. Uh, you're from Spyfield, and you're from uh, Halifax mm -hmm. originally. Um, it must have been so awesome coming back here after the Olympics, after uh, getting off the plane and everything. What, what kind of reception did you get? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty fun. We had like our, our family and friends there at the at the airport. I know yeah. across Canada there was a lot of uh, a lot of support when when all the athletes came off the planes. So yeah. that was like a pretty fun uh, fun thing for us to do. But um, after we kind of things had settled uh, you know, very briefly. Um, we were just kind of back at it and right. doing a lot of kind of appearances and uh, and getting around the, uh, the province to kind of share the medal and our stories that we that we made um, over in Pyeongchang. So awesome. it was really fun, yeah. What, now, what, did you get any kind of glimpse of Korean culture or Korean food when you were over there? That's one of my favorite kinds of food, so I, I was yeah, at that. Yeah. yeah, we went to a couple places as I think when we had our branch off time and some alone time, obviously a lot of people tapped into the culture, but as a group we went to a couple nice restaurants as well. And yeah. We got connected, our, our pre-camp before the Olympics was in a place called Incheon or Sungo. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. So uh, we met with some government people from uh, from that area and they took us to some of their traditional restaurants. So oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. A lot of kimchi, I'd imagine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Soju. <laughs> soju, which oh, is like soju, of course. Korean. <laughs> <laughs> a few soju shots will get anybody yeah. moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I thought it was water. <laughs> uh, perfect. So you can see this is this is where we should get our dumplings on the go. So I've got uh, the skillet here is bubbling away with our blueberries. I sort of wanted to do this dish because it's a great dish that people can do uh, at around a campfire. You can basically pack up all your uh, blueberry ingredients in one container and have pre-mix your dumplings even, and then when you've got your uh, cast iron skillet on the fire after you've done your hot dogs or whatever you want, you can just drop your dumplings in here, cover it over a little bit, and 15 minutes later you've got a great dessert for everybody uh, around the fire. Of course, uh, in August and September, blueberries are worse. So you can go pick the blueberries, go back to your campsite, and make a nice blueberry grunt. So, Troy, you want to be the mix master? I can try. All mix right. Master. Mix master. Now's All right. your time, Troy. Now's your time. So, like I said, I was doing a bit of a healthy twist on this. You guys can you know, give me a yay or a nay on, on how healthy it ends up being, but uh, I've got one cup of white flour here. Nay. We'll start that off. That's a nay. This is where, this is where it gets fun. Uh, I've got spelt flour here. So this is uh, half a cup of spelt flour. Adds a really uh, nice whole grain texture and quality to this. Adds a little bit of nuttiness and a little bit of extra flavor that that white flour is not bringing to it. Um, you could totally use whole wheat flour in place of this. Uh, when making it, but I'm just going to put the spelt right in there. And also I've got some medium ground cornmeal. So you can see some of it's powdery and there's a few little chunks, but um, this adds a nice little texture to it and also corn and blueberry. It's a great combination. Um, I see it a lot of times people making like uh, cornmeal blueberry muffins or in a pancake or something. It should go really well together. Also, a little bit of baking powder so that'll help leaven it all up. And then I've got some salt and sugar. So Troy, if you just want to Give that a good mix Mixer. with our uh, Give her a mix. with our spatula there. Mike Thorburn says, uh, "Look a good TR." <laughs> <laughs> For the first time I've ever cooked. It. <laughs> he told me you couldn't make toast this morning. So. Yeah. Well, good thing so I didn't put confident. toast on the menu. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, lots of people watching. We got the usual host and our owner uh, Patty Howard's watching. Hey, Saint Patty, Lewis. how's it going? We got Ferd Cross, um, Heather Lynn, Tara Kessler, James Dwyer, Nita Kirkbride. Ted Tupper, so lots of peeps watching. <laughs> They're all going with their uh, play on lemons. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Heather Lynn actually used to cut my hair before I started doing the buzz cut thing. So 
Yeah, so oh thanks, Heather, for all your years of service. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, Mixmaster has got, look We're at this. I, I think that's, that's pretty well mixed. Probably the best I've seen, really. Yeah, that's really good. So cheers to that. Cheers to that. So, Jill, I'll get you to add the yogurt right in there. Right, and, Troy, done. keep on mixing. You're not done yet. Oh, oh you're not done, No, Troy. no, you can't. Uh, after that title, you've got to keep mixing. <laughs> so, Jill, what kind of food are you eating on a regular basis? Um, I mean, I think... Had you asked me that when I first got back from the Olympics, yeah. the answer would be a little different. Um, <laughs> but we're pretty, yeah, we're pretty strict with our diets. I mean, I think after so much, so many years of training and you know, and preparing, you're, we learn that your body is really like a machine. So, um, you know, it's it's it is very important though, to, you know, to have treats like this and you know, and to treat yourself. It's uh, as strict as it is and as important as it is to fuel us properly. It's it's also you know very healthy to have that balance. But so. over the years, it's just in you now. This is what you eat. This it just becomes ingrained, and yeah. that's just repetition, go, like yeah. anything, right? So, yeah. yeah, so we've been, uh, yeah, we're getting, definitely getting our, uh, I mean, our knowledge on our desserts, <laughs> <Yeah>. but. <laughs> what is your treat then? I'm a big treat. ice cream oh, fanatic. Cool. Yeah, Ooh. that would be my treat. Moon Mist? Moon Mist is good. I saw somebody have a Moon Mist cheesecake. Yeah, yeah I shared that today. That's, 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 that's a friend. genius idea. Have you that's, had it? Oh no, goodness. I saw it today. You shared it. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh, that, that was me sharing it, I think. Oh, you shared it? I I was sharing it everywhere. Like, I saw it this morning, and I was like, it's amazing. So why don't we just stop the show and we'll go yeah. to Salvatore's. Which is, that's a yeah, pizza exactly. Place, We're going to take a minute, go to Salvatore's, get some Moon Mist Cheesecake. Isn't it pizza? Good. Salvatore's Pizza? Salvatore's Pizza, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah up in the North End. So, there. Free shout out from Salvatore's. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so, so free pizza. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that can happen on Facebook Live is that uh, the chef can measure out the ingredients and then turns out his dumpling's a little bit dry. So Ginger's being really nice and grabbing a little bit of buttermilk for us right now so we can get our dumplings <laughs> going. And sounds so, yeah. like a neigh. <laughs> and you have a five seconds of silence. The chef Mark is from England and they just lost a oh. oh. No, no, see, I, I've actually spent uh, I actually spent uh, 2006 in an English pub watching uh, the, the uh, World Cup then. Wow. And you don't mention it. That's what happens. If England no. ever loses in the World Cup, you don't talk so about it for four years. Mark's an anatomy now. Yeah, so Sorry, Mark, Mark <laughs> we're, we're, we're with you in solidarity for some reason, but we won't talk about the reason. It's fine. So here we go. Now we magically have our, uh, our nice little uh, blueberry grunt dumpling mixture ready to go. So it's kind of a loose mix. The idea is you want to hydrate the cornmeal, hydrate the flour a little bit before it goes in the mix. We answered a question about Ooh. dumpling versus a biscuit. Oh, dumpling versus biscuit. Yeah. Excellent. That's a good question. Joe. That is a great we'll question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe, so what? Yeah. Joe, what's the big Well, first of all, let's just do a, let's do a quick yay or nay. Uh, uh, what's your preference, uh, dumpling or biscuit? Dumpling. Okay, what you got? Biscuit. Okay, okay. So dumplings uh, don't hit the heat of the oven in the same way that mm. um, biscuits would. So biscuits, you want that sort of fluffy, light, uh, lightly brown topping. Whereas a dumpling rarely gets any color to it. This is going to get a nice blueberry color to it. But uh, dumplings, uh, you drop in something like uh, my nan used to make uh, uh, doughboys, they were called Newfoundland, but it was basically you make a boiled dinner and you make a really simple flour dumpling and you drop it in the top of the pot so it takes on the flavor from the stock and whatever's going on. Right. So dumplings usually absorb whatever flavor you got going on in your mixture. So having said that, we've got our bubbles going here, our sauce is thick. During this whole process of you guys coming to show, Troy kept on saying, it's not about me. It's not about me. The two fans so far are your peeps. There you go. Ah, yeah, boom. Yeah. Patrick Dunphy. Oh, yeah, you rock, Troy Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you rock. You're going on. Uh, that should be a hashtag. Yes. Yogurt interesting. And did you tell them what our testing we did today? Oh, yeah. We had a great win. We to this as a recipe. Yeah, so this is one of the things I really enjoy doing is recipe testing. So today I did six different varieties using, uh, uh, we did three different tests using buttermilk, three different tests using yogurt, and we kind of reached a consensus that we liked the, uh, the dumplings that were made with the yogurt. And uh, we also used uh, different combinations of white flour, cornmeal, and spelt. And uh, this sort of combination that came with here sort of has the flavor benefit of the spelt, has that textural flavor uh, benefit of the cornmeal and also um, the yogurt is actually a trick my mom used to use in pancakes all the time growing up. You make a really thick, fluffy pancake, I, and I just love the tang that you get from yogurt. So it's just a two percent yogurt, um, and it's also if you got flavored yogurt lying around, blueberry yogurt, perfect. Vanilla yogurt, perfect. So Jill, I'll just show you how I want these dumplings, and you all can right. help me uh, sort of scoop. We're just sure. gonna 
uh, just use our little ice cream scoop here, and you'll see that the, the batter is still kind of loose. Yeah. That's exactly what we want, because it's going to cook with this, the steam that comes up here. So you just want to go around the pan and drop a few in the middle. All right. We're good to go. Excellent. <laughs> <He's got that. laughs> Now's your time. It always throws us off when Adam puts his Snapchat glasses on. I mean, the, <laughs> they're just too cool. Put, put them on Troy. <laughs> If you had a few fans before, you got even more now. <laughs> Broadcasting live from Troy's face. <laughs> I can't even talk to him. It's hard to focus on the dumplings. <laughs> I can't even focus on the dumplings. So do you have any like go-to quick wild. desserts that you like to make at home? Or if you got to bring dessert to a friend's house for dinner? Or? To a fr um, you know what? I'm actually not a great baker. But one Neither of the, am I, that's why we're doing this. One of, <laughs> one of, one of the girls on the team um, was was notorious for making uh, tea biscuits. Oh. Blueberry tea biscuits. Nice. That was Johnny. Johnny, yeah. I Ooh. think that, do I put another one? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is this is a great thing. We uh, just stuff the skillet full, and the sauce is going to work its way up around the, uh, the dumplings. Okay. Should I keep going? Yeah, I keep going. I think you can probably squeak another half one in there and a half one in there. Two halves. Yeah, there we go. All right. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's, uh, that's one of the things about blueberry grunt. I looked at a lot of blueberry grunt recipes. None of them are pretty. It's just it's just a straight up dumpling in blue sauce. So it, it'll come out of here and the dumpling itself will be half blueberry and, and half nice and white and fluffy. And very rustic. Very rustic. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, it's a traditional Acadian dessert. Either. I've never heard about this. Really? No. Oh, wow. What? You've never heard of blueberry grunt? No. Really? That's interesting. Well, that is interesting. No. I know. I feel judged. <laughs> <laughs> I not? Oh, eyes. Are. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard what? Like, so, well, so if, you're, if you're going to say a, you're somewhere in the world and someone says, oh, switch, what's that? What's your traditional oh, switch dessert? What would you say it is? Blueberry grunt. <laughs> <laughs> and the training's done. Well done. Bravo. Well done. Bravo. Well, honestly, what do you think? What do you think? What would you say it's like Classic a... Classic nose style. Yeah. Strawberry shortcake? Yeah, strawberry shortcake. Feel maybe? Yeah. yeah. That was just something Mom yeah. and Nan used to always make. Yeah. You always still do, yeah. Yeah, I love strawberry shortcake. My I don't mom know, used to take me to U Picks. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. just be sitting down eating berries and she'd have, you know, 12 flats ready to go. Yeah. 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 Um, so at this point, you can see we've got the bubbles coming up around our dumplings. Um, so, for instance, if you have this, um, I did this in a cast iron skillet, so, you know, if you're out camping, you could just put this on the fire and tent it over with foil. So I've got a little foil tent oops, off to the stage left here. Is there another berry that would work well with this? Absolutely. Um, another kind of thing that would work perfectly is a, a bumbleberry mix. So you could okay. do raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, um, even a little bit of peach or apple would be perfect. Awesome. Perfect in this. So you don't have to be tied down to a single berry for this recipe. Um, and what's great about the dumplings is they just take on the flavor of whatever's around them, just like little sponges. So, um, yeah, you can either do this on the top of the stove by putting a lid on it, but I'm just going to put it in the oven behind us to finish the cooking okay. up. So how long would that go like that? If this was to happen at my house, I'd be in panic mode right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like looking at that boiling over like that, is that? That this, at this point, 10 minutes and it's done. So, um, and putting it in the oven is a great way to sort of control the temperature yeah. and keep it from boiling over too much. Because yeah. if you have it on the stove, like right now, if I, had, if I kept this going, we'd probably have a blueberry volcano yeah. on our hands somewhere. We don't really want that. It might make good for good live uh, cool. live streaming. So it's 10 minutes in the stove? 10 minutes in the stove at and then uh, 350 how, And how long? Out. We just left it there for like, how long? Yeah, it's been there for about four five minutes, minutes four okay. or five minutes. So the dumplings, because, we, because of the size we did, they're going to cook up fine in about 15 minutes. It'll be nice and fluffy. And I think what yeah. you guys are thinking, I did say, is that not burning underneath? How do you know it's not burning underneath? Ah, one of the things that's really helping us out right now is this is a cast iron pan. So that evenly distributes the heat so much better than a lot of like thin aluminum pans. That actually, the tester version that we did here earlier today with the six different ones, uh, that I, I kind of hid it from everybody, but it really scorched on the bottom, and I spent about ten minutes in the dish <laughs> scrubbing it earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I probably have a little bit of blueberry under my fingernails. Um, so cast iron is it's great for you know whether you're you know baking an eggs or baking something like this or your skillet cornbread um, because it uh, manages the heat and even evenly distributes the heat so well. You don't have to worry about burning as much as would you say all cast irons are equal? Uh, cast iron is a cast iron? It, it, yeah, pretty much. It's um, The thing that matters the most with cast iron is that it's seasoned properly. Right. So, um, you know, you can look online for all different methods to seasoning them. Uh, what seasoning refers to is uh, 
basically it's got all these little pores in it like your skin. So the idea is you fill these pores in with a little bit of oil over time. So there's a whole process where you put your skillet in the oven. But uh, usually flaxseed oil is the best uh, I've heard for, for uh, cast iron. So you put a little bit of flaxseed oil, put it in the oven really hot, take it out, let it breathe a bit. And then you, it's basically a nonstick pan after that. So as long as you uh, don't uh, uh, cook it or cook it, wash it in soapy water and take that oily layer off, the, yeah. the best thing is just even a little salt scrub. Uh, that'll take the chunks off of it and really manage it. But cool. cast iron is your friend. And there's a lot yeah. of, you know, a whole other can but there's a lot of coloring people that actually don't use non-stick. They stick to those and stainless steel because some of those elements. Absolutely. And yeah. I, I learned how to make an omelet in a French steel pan, which is super stressful when, you know, you're a, a month out of culinary school and you've got <laughs> you to make a three egg, <laughs> three egg omelet in a sticky pan. Yeah. So oh. you got to have the oil super hot in order to do it. And you've got to... But you can do it. You can do it, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good it. test of a, of a I don't chef. know if Troy could do it. <laughs> we found this out in the parking lot. We, oh, oh, we found this out in the parking lot. Is, is, that, is that my metal? We found this out in the parking lot. It was just on the ground. Is oh, it yours? Yeah. Is it yours? Um, I think it might be yours. Yeah. Oh. Find those those goggles. Those goggles will find it anywhere. <laughs> so I, I have a question. Sure. Are you guys being a few with this? How are, it's here we think Canadians are loved all over the world. Like, how are Canadians, as Canadians, do you feel you're treated differently? Like, and people are like, oh my gosh, and, Really happy to see you more than other countries, or what would you say? Putting it on you. You're putting it on me. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I mean, I think I think we pride ourselves in, in character and, and you know in in you know hard work and um, you know just making sure that we have a, a welcoming and hardworking culture um, yeah. as Canadians in general, um, whether you're an athlete or, or not. So I think that um, you know we took great pride in going over to the Olympics and um, making sure that we were of course like polite to. Know, the the residents of you know Seoul and, and Incheon when we were there and then of course Pyeongchang and um, we got some some great feedback and you know so did our staff of course which um, you know of how everybody was and uh, and just enjoying the, the culture there and um, when we were around the other athletes obviously you know we're in such a tight knit and you know it's a it's a you know dog eat dog environment for yeah. the the time being but you know at the end of the, the games it's uh, you really appreciate the the efforts that people put in um from every country you know we're, we're all we all have the same dream which was yeah. to represent our country at the olympics um you know in any sport so to be able to go there and share that was with those other um, countries and you know receive positive feedback from them and yeah. you know get get feedback from from everyone. everyone was was a lot of fun from the hockey like the hockey canada side of things like Hockey Canada has taken such a leadership role in the development of female hockey like, yeah. right across the world. So whenever we do go to sort of world events, there's a high level of respect just because we work with the IHF to help develop the game right across the world. So yeah. you, you don't get to see that all the time, but when you do get to the same event, it's pretty cool to see the respect that they have for what you're doing. And you mentioned that uh, they've been helping, Canada has been helping like, female hockey across the world. You come from male mainly male hockey, like how's that different? Yeah, I've uh, I've been with involved with female hockey for about three years now. I honestly, I, I haven't noticed a whole lot of difference. I think uh, when I first got started, I think one of the, the biggest things I noticed was just how the, the female athletes were getting coached. Yeah. And, and to be honest, uh, to a certain extent, maybe being shortchanged a little bit. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is these girls are pro athletes and should be treated very similar to what a National Hockey League player gets uh, and, and how they're treated. So, honestly, it, it probably happened by mistake because I got thrown into it so quickly, I didn't have time to adapt. So, I was just, I'm just going to be myself. And, you know, like to me, I've always said to other coaches, like a turnover in the men's game is the same as a turnover in the female's game. So, let's deal with it similarly, right? So. And I think it's, uh, I think from the girls' point of view, it's nice to just be held accountable. They want to do well, they want to win gold medals. So I, I don't think a lot needs to change. I think it just like guys or girls, if you show you care about them, yeah. uh, you know, it's an old saying, but they'll care how much you know. Yeah, and you said, I did look at your bio and said you started hockey because your mother had the hockey rink and all that stuff. So are you, do you think one of your goals is that <coughs> maybe the parents are making hockey rinks for the girls? Yeah, I think so. When my parents would, uh, you know, it was my dad and my mom both who were who were working on that rink. You know, my dad worked nights and he would come home in the middle of the night at 4 a.m. and flood the rink. 
and then my mom would be up in the afternoon or after, when she got back from work and um, and, and working on it too, which which is important, you know. And you know, of course, that um, Brett, my brother, was the one who started playing, and uh, I got jealous. And uh, my parents threw me in there. I think I was annoying them in the stands, and they were is like, "Is he older than you?" He's younger than me. He's younger yeah, than you. there's weren't, there weren't that many girls playing at the time. I was into other sports, a bunch of other sports, and um, and yeah, and I and I jumped on the ice for that one time and um, was just addicted to it then, and, and never really got off. That was so, it. Yeah. Were your parents involved in the hockey? Like when they were younger as well, like was there a little bit of a culture that already started? Yeah, yeah. My dad's side of the family um, was big into hockey. Okay. My uncle Dwayne played so at, at St. FX, and yeah, yeah. No, it's it's definitely yeah. My brother just graduated from Alabama Huntsville, and, and he's hoping to you know make his his professional debut at some point awesome. as well. So yeah, it's it's definitely in the in the blood for sure. So. No. And would you say most of uh, the players are kind of in that boat? Like it was kind of in the blood as they grew up. I think so, oh, yeah. Stop. Obviously, you know, we were chatting about it earlier, but we do have, there's quite an age gap between yeah. the youngest and the oldest for the national program. So um, one of the cool things about being on a team like that is that everybody has their own story. Yes. And, and you know, whether that be even the slightly slightly similar, there there is always uh, always differences in how well, we got to our dreams. Would you say they started young, they kind of, it was built in them when they were at a really young age, would you say? Or yeah, no? I think so. I mean, no. I think that young age definitely varies. So there's no but, for like my 12 year old <laughs> You know what? So there could be. There could put her in it. There's <laughs> always a. I'm just always interested to see. Put her in it. Danielle yeah. Boya started. Oh started really? Late, right. Just okay. getting doctor. One of the of best to ever okay. step foot on the ice. So. I think I've learned I'm out of luck for Olympic gold. <laughs> yeah. yeah for the women's team. For yes. the women's team, it's the current And I'm sorry. Do we talk about camps already? You do have camps coming up. Yeah, so Blair and I, Blair, Blair's the, of course the, the other athlete from Nova Scotia that competed um, alongside of me at the Olympics. Her and I decided to team up our, our individual camps this year and, and uh, work as one. Um, so with, with Troy's help, of course, we, uh, yeah, we're putting on three camps in August. And uh, when we've released them, they, it was almost full within awesome. within maybe an hour and a half, two hours, which was a panic mode at first because we were not prepared uh, mm -hmm. for that excitement and that feedback, but which is which is very humbling and exciting awesome. for women's hockey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't, I mean, we couldn't, you couldn't put a line together 20 years ago, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, your, that's your play. Yeah, no, it's fun, yeah. But no, I was emotional the first, I held my first camp four years ago, and um, like I said, you know, we couldn't put a line together 20 years ago, and I had a full camp of 60 girls, and I, I had to leave, I was emotional, because I couldn't that's believe awesome. there was that many girls that wanted to just play the game, so it was pretty cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to turn around and take our blueberry bread out of the oven. Yeah. Yeah. Wink, nod, wink, wink, nod, nod, yeah. ginger. Okay. All right, cool. I'm grab my plates. All right. Time for that. damage. We have a, I, have I shouldn't have gone to Tim's. That's something called the chatter. It's basically like I a question you guys put answers. The chatter? It's, I call it the one chatter. word answers? No, no, no it's, it's just, it could, it's definitely not be one word answers, but just okay. kind of quick. Like, okay. Like, okay. First Tr wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tr that was your poor. <laughs> All right, so that's that's the finished version. You see the uh, our dumplings, the grunt, if you will. Actually, do you know why it's called blueberry grunt? First, of all, I have no idea. I, I meant to tell the story earlier. I couldn't even guess. The grunt apparently, uh, when they used to make it back in the day on uh, on the fire or on the hearth, uh, the sound that the dumpling would would make, they called it. They thought it was a grunt, like a pig or something, and with the lid off. It would go, <laughs> I don't know, I imagine. That's my version wow. of the front, yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> you can tell them those things. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And also in New England, it's called a slump, a blueberry slump. Okay. Yeah, so it's a slump or a grunt. That would almost make more sense because it's kind of like. Yeah, it's kind of like. Oh, I, don't, I can't yeah. see that thing grunting like a pig. <laughs> right? Yeah, not, not the way we, we made it at least. So, anyway, I'll just do a nice little uh, plate up for all of us here so we can have a, a taste of it. But Ooh, it's, I think Troy has those plates at home. Did you take them from our playroom? <laughs> Fancy. Are those plastic? Are those plastic? Oh, we have to tie in this thing. Oh, yeah. Falling behind on questions. No, oh, sorry. Lots of questions. Come on, Adam. Oh, Come on, Adam. Sorry, uh, there's blueberries and there's some desserts that I've seen before. Sorry. Right. Blueberry crunch. What was mm -hmm. your best Olympic moment off the ice? Off the ice. You could you start it. I'm sure there's more than one, but... I think for me, honestly, it, there's two. One was uh, right before the opening ceremonies. I did, like Sometimes staff doesn't get to walk in the opening ceremonies. And, and I thought it was pretty cool and calm. And then right before we went into the stadium and when they announced Welcome Team Canada, 
I sort of got a little bit of goosebumps. And I think you just, you think back, every, you know, all your teachers, all everybody that maybe had a role in that. So that, that was a special time for me. And then maybe the other one is just, uh, you know, like going in the athletes' village and being like around the food court, the meal hall, and just seeing all the high-end athletes that normally I'm home sitting on my coach, having a beer, watching it, hearing their stories, and now you're sitting there and you're kind of a part of it. So that was a little bit eye-opening for me. So. That's, that's awesome question. I mean, good answer. Um, mine's, mine's very similar to Troy's as well. I think just like getting there and meeting the other athletes and um, hearing their stories and, and sharing kind of in all the triumphs and, and the hardships that, that got us there. And you really get to, like, like Troy said, you know, you're used to watching everyone on TV. And, and we would in our little lounge there. We would all sit together and from all these different sports. And we would watch each other on TV right there. And then they'd show up 20 minutes later after their event and sit down with you and we talk about it. And it was um, just kind of sharing. And, hey, was that a good skate? Was that a good run, you know, down the bobsled track? And stuff like that was, was kind of cool to do. And, um, yeah, I think also finding out when I made the team was pretty special, too, because it was yeah. such a such a long road to get there. So um, that day, that moment was uh, was pretty memorable for sure. Even though I was sobbing the whole time. <laughs> Poor Troy. <laughs> I didn't well, how hear is that anything. working with girls? I mean, don't don't they have a little more emotions going on than the, than the boys? Is that yeah, I a think shift at all? I think they're more comfortable maybe showing it, but the guys will show well, show they, emotion okay. as well. Like something that big, right? They've been putting everything in their It'd whole life the to get there, okay. so it's. There's, there's good and bad tears, but so, yeah. definitely emotional. Yeah. Sure. Awesome. Well, I don't know if you're going to get emotional, but we should probably try the blueberry <laughs> Just why you try it? I, I might know. get emotional <laughs> if I eat this. Uh, actually, uh, Ginger, would you mind passing us a few spoons? Oh, yes. That would be fantastic. Before I pour it in the chat, let me ask you, you guys, will you guys do your thing first? Eat it and try it and enjoy it and ask a couple questions. Yeah. I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old. Oh, cool. And I was, I guess say, like, I was like, Cool, it's gonna play hockey. I'm not sure because there's so much, like, even if you're just, they're just gonna Thank play, you. there's so much time. Yeah. You might, not everyone's gonna make the Olympics, but there's still the hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of events. So, but what is your advice for, for parents and kids starting out? Do you have any advice for everybody? Like, uh, I do put them in as many different sports as you can um, and keep them in as many I've had parents um, number of parents come up to me and be like oh my gosh my daughter um, is just loves dance like I need her in hockey and she just like loves to dance all the time and I'm like that is fantastic news keep her in both because um, I think and I, I do believe this I think the reason um, one of the biggest reasons I made the Olympic team was because of the skills that I acquired playing soccer um, and you know I was I'm like a little shifty um, you know speedy forward that acquired um, that agility side of my game from being a striker and uh, I, I that was what I brought to, the, to that team so I don't think that that was um, if that was shared in my soccer career then that wouldn't have you know translated over to my hockey career so I think it's huge for for parents who have young athletes you know it's it is fun to watch um, you know athletes on TV and you see people hoisting the NHL the Stanley Cup and um, of course you know the the World Cup and, and everything is so glamorous on TV but there's a there's a hard road to get there um, that you don't see. So, uh, but most athletes, I think, that are at that level took part in a lot of different sports other than just the one that you see them um, decorated in. Yeah. Which one you say helps them figure out which one they like? Yeah, absolutely. Giving them the resilient exposure and everything really should. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I played soccer for a very long. I put I played soccer, but I played volleyball, lacrosse, every awesome. track. I did it all. But oh, so um, what? Yeah, it's just okay, yeah, it's just you're, so you're an athlete, you're an athlete. Yeah, don't give me a paintbrush, but <laughs> anything else. It's, it's honestly her playing those other sports that probably gave her the athletic ability to play hockey. Okay. You know, like if you I think if you advice. focus on one, it's. No, that's great advice. We also I talked to earlier about my friend Thomas, the trainer. He said he trained you for couple months, a few years, like years ago, I think it would have been 15, mm -hmm. they said it was just a different, you know, like, you were just different. So I think, you you know, can tell way back You can just tell way back when. Mm -hmm. How early is, how early do you know? As someone watching as a coach, or would be able to see a player that's like four, like, oh my gosh, they see them. Can you tell that early? Can you tell that She's early? different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Let me my blue right Boom. <laughs> Can I buy this? Is this the yeah. time? Oh yeah, do it. Use the cast iron, it'll have more effect. She's yeah. different. <laughs> 
keep going, Troy. I gotta think of a burn for you. <laughs> I do think the biggest thing is like, I think some parents, coaches at an early age, they think there's an end result of why they're putting their kid into this sport. And the end result should be some values that you may gain through it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, people think that's only at the, at the low levels, the grassroots level. Like that's how we should be teaching at the Olympic level, at the pro level. It's still like, you know I mean? They're, they're pro athletes. They deserve to be treated that way, but they still deserve to be treated with respect. And, and I think if people went into sports, hockey, baseball, soccer, not with this big crazy end goal of being a pro athlete, and just learning, you know, like respect and fair play and team play and leadership, all those things, huge things generally come out of it. And you continue to have the passion, which gives you an opportunity to maybe be a real good athlete at some point. And that's what girls like children. And if you don't have all those, if you don't, uh, if you have all those qualities and you aren't super sporty, we'll take you in the kitchen because those are, <laughs> those are the like exact skills. same skills we need here. Yeah. I mean, based on how good this is, I would, <laughs> I'd hire Troy. <laughs> no joke. I used to, I ran a restaurant for years and I hired athletes, team athletes. I had hockey players from Stu, Dow, uh, and basketball players and they, because they understood. They didn't say that's not my table. There was none of that. That's not my section. It was obviously, I'll run your food. To your point, you really learn it through the sport, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. Very good. Awesome. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you mix it down with mix, mix good, master good. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it looks like a mess, but that's the thing about Blueberry Grunt. It's super tasty. Mm -hmm. It was a mess with Blueberry Grunt. Right? Like, I remember my sister That's as a kid right. loved blueberries so much, they'd all, she'd would, just stain her face with like blueberries. It'd be like blueberry-esque or something. Yeah. Like you wouldn't have like that, that word. Yeah. Awesome. So you guys ready for the chatter? Yeah, how do you chatter? 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 Chatter, I need you to move in just a little bit. So you're center stage here. I keep trying to slide. I know you're like, yeah. right here, I want to like that. Troy's like out of it. I'm going to eat on the side while you chatter. So these aren't one word, they don't have to be one word answers. They could be. Oh, there we go. But they just, they're just basic questions. But you almost answered one. But I'll, I'll see what happens. So it's, okay, quick. it's just it could be one one word. All right. It's just quick answers. You should you should probably know. Am I going to regret this? Oh my God. No. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what comes out of your mouth. All right. Yeah. Yeah. True. You can just separate answers from the best player. Best player ever in your mind. Best hockey player ever. Sidney Crosby. Wayne Gretzky. That's a generation thing. Right there. Uh, childhood idol. Carolyn Willett. Nice. Carolyn Willett. Oh, okay. Donatello, the Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, Deserted Island, what CD or album would you bring out of what turtle one is? Oh, <laughs> that's specific. Something country. Some country. Oh, country fan. Oh, country. My husband will love you right now. <laughs> James Taylor's greatest hits. Oh, that's safe. That's good. Classic, I am classic. really dating myself. Here. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> like Beaver. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you both say you're not coached, but you must have a go-to dish if you have to make something. What is it? Soup works. Yes. Soup. <laughs> <laughs> Easy <laughs> math. <laughs> so. Um, I would say like a stuffed chicken. Or some right. Yeah, that's that's good. It looks like. Kind of looks like you're classy, but it's really easy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Pre bought, Costco. Pre, <laughs> <laughs> Pre game meal. Whatever works. Pre peanut, peanut butter and banana sandwich. Nice. Which one you get pre game for? Way back when or coaching? Is you have two <laughs> options? Coaching is Coaching when it's as <laughs> something as we can get, as quick as we can get. Yeah. Back, past it. Always past it. Okay. Um, have you met anyone that made you speechless? Did you all the world, you maybe met some people that you can see from afar. Is there anyone that made you speechless at all? Um, like awestruck, kind awestruck, of? yeah. Like they were like, oh my gosh. Yeah, the year before the centralization, Cassie Campbell came and spoke to our like the whole group, um, and kind of did a, a little speech on kind of what it takes. That was the kind of the line throughout her speech, and um, yeah, I, I felt I left speechless. I don't think I really have anybody in Nado to disrespect or anything like that. I just, anybody that I'm not excited to meet, I generally want to be able to ask some questions to. Okay. So, not really. Second favorite sport to play? Soccer. Soccer. Yeah. Baseball. Baseball. Nice. Um, 
Hype up songs. What were you playing in the in the in the locker room before going out for the games? What was the song? Playing? Hype up song. Usually it's something Beyonce. Usually big Beyonce fan. Um, but this at the Olympics it was it, it was a song like called yeah Ain't Easy. It was like a song from the um, that new show. Uh, I don't know what the show was called. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but. But the guys, like the the, the group that at, the guy and the girl that had sang it, um, they had actually I had sent that somewhere else, and they had actually tweeted back because they had saw it. So good nice. song, guys. Nice. <laughs> Hip, tragically. Yeah. The tragedy. That's a win. Yeah. So before I die, I want to make blueberry grunt by myself. <laughs> I put that in your mind. I was just thinking that. I I I did it. Boom. Yes. <laughs> That's tough. You're living it. You can have some thinking to do when you get home. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm just going to go home, put the tragedy hip on, and think about think that question. Yeah. What is the worst smell ever? Miso soup. Really? Oh. Oh. Sorry. I had worse. I was like, oh, you guys are hockey players. Seriously, it's going to be some Yeah. Stinky. It's going to be some pretty stuff. Oh, it's got to be some hockey bag stuff. <laughs> It's my gear. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just I'll say it because Troy's too kind not to, but I have the worst smelling gear. Do you? <laughs> Love it. I don't know that I heard that on another, <laughs> on another video. Someone commented yeah. on her. This is, oh, okay. This is been publicly gear. stated now, so yeah. that's, that's good. Goodbye, <laughs> friendships. <Yeah. laughs> so in your playing career, worst, what would you say your first bonehead move play ever? Like, is there ever a play that you remember that was like, oh my God, that's like, like scoring your net, like on own yeah, net on your or own something. Yeah, on net or something. Over there, like, have oh you my done gosh, it? Have they have done it. I haven't. Oh, no. no. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but uh, <laughs> I used to run a roller hockey league yeah. way back when, and I also played in the league. But we were just talking about this this weekend. I had to suspend myself for the remainder of the season. <laughs> Stop it. So I got in a little altercation and I had to send oh a, a message to our governing body suspending myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, a, that's a little bonus. I don't even have one. It sounds just, very responsible. Yeah, I, mean, I don't have one. No, I had to take care of you. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and this is kind of the answer I think the question you guys have already answered, I think, but maybe not. Was there a particular moment uh, that you can recall where the reality of what you accomplished hit you when you're in? Was there a fight? Or a really gravity situation? Where you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did it. Um, yeah, I mean, other than the, the opening ceremonies, I think we also did something really special um, in our leadership group, gave our rookies their jerseys for the first time. So, like, the first time we got to hold and put on that um, Olympic jersey. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a that was a kind of, like, eye-opening, holy smokes, my dream is here. Mm -hmm. We had... Uh, one of our equipment managers was from New Brunswick, or from Moncton, uh, Moncton area, and I've worked with him in the past, and right before the opening game, the puck drop of the opening game in the Olympics, everybody's obviously nervous, and I try to stay pretty calm, and he just looked back at me, and he, he gave, reached out to give me a knuckle tap and just said, who are we kidding for Aww. being at the Olympics? So I just thought it was cool, someone that I've had some past experiences with, so we did a little knuckle tap. And I remember some of the girls looking back and just shaking their head, like, <laughs> what is wrong with you two? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are we doing yeah. here? That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, last one. You got six You got six players to put on the ice in the positions. Who is it? Of all time. It could be any gender, whatever. It doesn't matter. Best oh. six ever that you need to put on the ice. Is this, okay. Is this collaborative, or is this? Sure, you got whatever you want. Yeah, there yeah, might yeah. be some, there might be some, like, you can, he kicked himself out of his own lead, so don't be getting out of the game. Okay. And you can put yourself on the team, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Joe, Joe, Troy Ryan. Joe, <laughs> <laughs> you're left with Before he kicked yeah. himself out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say. Goalie. We got Poulain. Price. Who? Like David. Oh, Poulain. it's, oh, it's any. Anytime. Any time. Any era. Millette. Poulain, for sure. That's a good forward line. McDavid. Or Sid. Yeah, you gotta have Sid there. Sid. We're gonna have like five. Yeah, we have, we have a few. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have to put one of them in the We goal. have five forwards. <laughs> Let's go play defense now. Doughty. We gotta put Fortino. Player, player. <laughs> player, you gotta put player there. 
center. It's tough. Yeah, that's that's hard. There's too many. Well, a good line would Crosby in the middle with Sarnia on the left wing and Blair turn <laughs> on the right. right. All Nova Scotia line. Maybe Al McGinnis on the right side point. Troy Ryan left. And, and someone starts poking one of them. Yeah, comes out I the come end. off the bench. <laughs> I didn't get a lot of ice time. <laughs> I think Adam's in a secret hockey pool and he's trying to get some yeah. tips. Yeah, hey? Yeah. 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 That's the chatter. Well, awesome. I'm you. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. On the spot. How was your blueberry it's grunge? Delicious. So good. So it's good. pretty delicious. It is really good. I'm not even a... There was sugar in there, right? Someone had asked. I yeah, there that. was sugar in there, but it doesn't need to be a whole lot of sugar. Yeah. Uh, I use three quarters of a cup for four cups of blueberries. You can take it down to, ha to a quarter of a cup if you want. Yeah. There's enough sugar in a blueberry. And also, I have the lemon in there because I really like that uh, that tart. Yeah. Very good. I'm sure. I know. There is people going back and forth. It's. Uh, I will. Sorry to add another one. Just so we don't forget. Uh, is there any other than your camps? Is there any other passions you have that you want to share? Both of you like charities or things that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think one of the really really exciting things about coming back from the Olympics was being able to share um, our stories and um, and our success over there. Um, and I say success now, but you know, obviously at the time it was, it took a little while to say that and to own it as that. Um, just because we ha we set such high standards for gold, of course. But um, now, we, you know, now we can we can share those with with everyone in Nova Scotia and, and kind of the stories behind it. So um, I've been heavily involved with the Ronald Dalton House, um, amazing, amazing charitable organization for these families. I've been so fortunate to be able to go there. Um, get over there, get some nets in there, and uh, play some hockey, and um, meet these these amazing families who go through, you know, the hardships that we just don't even understand. Um, so that was another one. Kids sport as well is is exciting, and uh, you know, and getting getting funding there and, and supporting you know more youth playing sports is huge because you know I, I think Troy touched on it a little bit earlier, but you it's. As great as actual sport is, the, the things that you take out of sport, um, you know, when you're all done is the friendships that you made and the character that you build and um, that, that comes from, you know, that teamwork and, you know, that time management, um, you know, and that hard work that you get from sports. So, kids sport is great and, uh, yeah, and Ron McDonald, those are, those are two heavy ones that I've been very, very blessed to, uh, to share some time with. That's awesome. Yeah, lately it's been a lot of sort of um, invites to bigger events where they're ch they're supporting different charities like the both of us just got back from uh, Dennis Bombay and Craig McDonald the, the fundraiser they have down in Anaganish. In general like I've done some Ronald McDonald hosts I would like to get involved with kids sport here locally a little bit more I've done some in other other locations but and, you know much like Jill like uh, a lot of people in hockey are pretty good in the community and generally if someone calls with a legitimate a request uh, I you know we just don't say no if we can support it we'll do whatever we can to support it and it's it just makes it honestly sometimes that stuff is bigger than the actual events that we're getting an, an opportunity so I look at it as a bit of a privilege just to be involved and invited cool great well um, thanks a lot for coming on chit chat shop you guys uh, should we do the uh, the special we will do uh, special thing about yeah. let me go through some comments here because oh I yeah we gotta comments. get it. Joe McDonald so proud of you, Jill. You're an all-around beautiful person. Uh, you, success is all relative. I'm proud of you, Jillian. My name's Charlotte. My wife says, can you post a recipe, please? <laughs> oh, yes. We actually, I've got it all written down. Recipes going on the Chit Chat Shop website. Yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> I can't wait to hear you know Joyce call me. just said, so your nickname was The Rat. Where'd that come from? The Rat. <laughs> that's what it says right now. Probably no, kicking no. himself so out of his ball, Um... I guess just the way I played, I was not very big. I'm a little bit bigger now from some blueberry <laughs> Um I guess I was small and wanted to prove people wrong that I could uh, hang in there with anybody, so I caused a lot of trouble. And uh, I guess a rodent, uh, so I was nicknamed the rat. I remember growing up, like a lot of people would like see me out publicly or call my house and they didn't, no one called me Troy, it was like they'd call my house and my mother would answer and it'd be like, was the rat around? Oh. <laughs> and, and now at my age, still, you know, all my Christmas time, people call me the rat, so. It's as bad as the name is, it, I think it's indirectly a compliment. Yeah. yeah. I wish I was called the rat. <laughs> you get a little rat. I do, right? Your good guy to have around was there's someone who calls the rockets. I've been there before. <laughs> Just one comment there at the Sorry. end. 
There's a lot of great ones here. Andrew. Andrew McVick. Awesome guy. Great Both hockey, are though. class acts. Both give back so much to the sport. Many don't realize Julian is a great role model, and Troy sets an excellent example for young coaches who want to progress through the ranks. Thanks, Andrew. That's Andrew awesome. is a, nice. a local guy that played university hockey, major junior hockey, and pro hockey. Yeah. And just just recently saw him. He's back now coaching in minor hockey. So great, great guy. So back to what you said at the Olympics. Do you believe you're doing this? This show? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're doing the key. We're leaving you a chit chat talk. You made it. Cannot hey, believe it. This is just made one it. step. We up. made it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> when am I going to make blueberry grunts? This is the Finally. <laughs> I knew I did all those squats for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> to burn off the grunt. That's the grunt. There you go. There's where the name comes from. There you go. There you go. Mm. Done. So noise you make burning it off. Yeah. So you want to tell them what the, the final thing we do to finish the show? Yeah. So traditionally, we have to say chit chat chop really fast five times. Okay. So just it's like a, any other drill in hockey, we're going <laughs> like this. Yeah. It's like Peter Pepper, Peter Pepper, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Chit chat chop, chit chat chop. Because when we first started the show, our original host, Chef Ben, couldn't pronounce it. Uh, it took okay. like three episodes, okay. so that was the funny thing, so that's fine. That's so episode. Peter Piper picked a pickle, pickle, pickled peppers. Okay. Yeah. All right, so on three. And I count three. Oh, yeah. It's, gonna, it's like literally. Got it? Five times? Okay. Three, two, one. Chit chit chop, chit chit chop, chit chit chop, chit chit chop, chit chit chop. I always go for six. I overdo it. I overdo it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Awesome to meet you guys, and thanks for coming on. See you later, Facebook. Thanks for joining us.